とご飯はどのぐらいの頻度で食べますか？ああ毎日食べエブリデイ、<笑>エブリデイです。Hello and welcome to a special episode of Grizzly and Bear Overland. Lee and I have been traveling in Japan for a long time now, and we've been here for more than a rice cycle. Since we are driving around the country, I've been fascinated by this process, and I decided to make a little documentary about Japanese rice. We drove to some very special places, meeting farmers. Learning about the most consumed food in the world, from dry to flooded fields, from seedlings to fully grown plants, from green to yellow, various shapes of fields, small or much bigger, traditional or more industrial, from planting to harvest season. But first, let's go back to the end of April. The sun and the rain had completed their task, and six months later, it is harvest season. My name is Takashi Kumei. Welcome to Hoshitoge. This rice starts is 300 ago. Very busy in the morning with the photographers. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This morning is very beautiful. Yeah. This is way sharper than the one in Tajikistan. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Tajikistan on the Bartang Valley. Steffi did a bit of this. But you reckon that one's better, huh? Yeah. Ah, that's a big one. Three, three, three. What? Three. Three. Three, three, three. All right. Yeah, see you again. <laughs> yes. 
We then returned to Akuba and our friend Aya took us to visit a rice factory. My name is Yasunori Taima. I work at Shiro Uma Nojo as a farmer. Thank you. This machine、um, harvests everything automatically, separate. Back to the soil. Yep, yep, yep.、Oh, wow. Make、okay. it cut very fine next year、yeah. when they start. あのトラックブルーカーに全部入れて。The crops are then transferred from the machine to the back of a truck. The truck unloads the grain straight into the chute. The rice is directed into those massive dryers. Each silo is seven meters high and contains three tons of rice. The rice is circulating from top to bottom, and it will take about 24 hours to dry this massive amount of grain. Depending on the weather, the traditional drying process can take more than two weeks and can be uneven. In each dryer, the traceability is recorded. They know from which field the rice is coming from. It is also linked to an app. Showing the position of the field and who was in charge of the harvest. Once the grain is completely dry, the next process is to take off the husk. The rice is directed to a complex machine and it will go between two rolls. At this point, we have a mix of rice and husk. Some shaking trays will separate the grain and the husk. This is momigara, which is、um, shell husk. Momigara can be used to store food, like fruit and eggs, and also to protect special goods. This material here, I'm not sure the word in Japanese, momigara. It's made from the rice husk. And then it'll be used for warming in furnaces, for barbecues, it can be used as coals. And it's super heavy and it smells amazing. Now we have it the beautiful brown rice. It will then go through a cylinder to remove the grains that are too small. This rice can be used to make rice flour. The rice flour can be used to make Japanese sweets, like mochi, soft rice cakes often filled with red bean paste. Rice flour can also be used to make plain rice cakes. They are delicious, grilled with soy sauce. Back to the factory. The rice will go through another machine to remove stones. Another machine detects with a camera the rice color. If it's the wrong color, it will be rejected. This type of rice can be used by convenience stores to make rice based products. What is it? Onion gravy. At the end of the process, in this factory, 90% of the rice turned out to be a good quality rice.
70 hectares of rice fields for a total production of 350 tons per year. This company distributes all over Japan, but doesn't export overseas. And it is the case of most rice in Japan. Sake companies buy use this packet, this size, okay, one ton. Yeah. Water percentage, the sugar percentage, mm. and also color. Always at the end, the human check. So that's the best, this is the best quality. The second quality. Not good. Mm. 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 Uh, that's rice for sake. sake. It's in sake. Mm. This, stamp. this stamp is standard for whole Japan. This machine now is going to turn brown rice into white rice. Brown rice is genmai. White rice is hakumai. In Japan, there are self-service machines to polish rice everywhere on the side of the road. <laughs> The powder is called nuka. In Japan, you use that nuka with water and salt. Then you can pickle the vegetables. At the end, you have a beautiful pickles, which is fermented, full of vitamin, very healthy. White rice. All the world is eating rice, but I'm sure only a small fraction of the world know where it comes from. We said thank you and goodbye, and we drove to the shop, just a couple of kilometers away. Sake made it with their rice. That's also sake, Japanese sake. We bought two kilograms of organic rice to support their business and to thank them for the time. This red uh, sticker means fresh harvest. Straight out the field. I think it's still warm. I can hear it kicking. But for now, we let a Japanese chef cook some rice for us. So this rice made by me. We really enjoyed making this little documentary. Thanks to some great people, we have learned a lot about a 2,000 years old staple food consumed by almost every people in the world. We hope you found it interesting. I would like to say a big thank you to our friend Ayako for her assistance in the making of this video. Thank you also Sophie for the French subtitles and of course thank you to all our amazing patrons for supporting our journey and our work. We'll see you next time. Until then, take care. Bye bye.